Angels Journal Life. Hello and welcome to the Rangers Journal. My name is Kai Watson and as you can see by the title of today's video, we're going to look at three players that are still free agents that Rangers could sign. By the transfer window being shut, you can still bring in three agents throughout kind of the period of the season. So we're going to look at three players I think could be good signings for this team. There is a lot more high profile ones still there. You've got the likes of Joel Matip, Adrian Rabi, Anthony Martial were still free agents, but I don't think anyone like that is realistic. Someone that I did think would have been realistic was Yusuf Yuziki who was at Leo Turkey International. Apparently he was offered to Man United and Spurs and his agent was asking for a hundred grand a week. So definitely nowhere near kind of realistic for Rangers. So I'll pick three players, a couple of young players and one more experienced player in positions I think we can maybe fill in and fill out a bit just for squad depth. So let's get started. First player we're going to look at is the man in the thumbnail. So Edouard Michoud. 21, French, 5 foot 10. Obviously, he's currently a free agent. The only reason he is a free agent just now is due to some conflicts with his, with his contract. And so he actually left Adana Demerspor due to failure to pay his wages. So that's the only reason that he's a free agent just now because I think he's a really quality player. He came through PSG's academy. He's represented France at every level up until under 20. Had a very decent loan spell at Sunderland and he was very highly rated. So let's look at some of his stats from last season. So 24 appearances, 20 from the start, got one assist, 90.2% pass accuracy, 70% long ball accuracy, 1.04 chances created per 90, 64.7% dribble success fill, 2.71 times, 66.7% tackles, one is 56.3% duels one. Those are excellent numbers. You can see ground duels listed in strengths at the right hand side there. It's a really talented football. You can see those passing numbers are Incredibly, he's the type of player that can kind of control the game from deep. He can play as a six or an eight. He is good at driving forward, but I think he's better in that deeper role, kind of like Marco Verratti. I know it's an easy comparison to make with the both were at PSG, but I think that's probably where he's best, just sitting deeper, receiving the ball, dictating the play, which is something we've not really had someone able to do. And then you look at how good the defensive numbers are as well. Someone that's that good in ground duels and the tackles one as well. Really impressive numbers. Like I say, he's only 21. And the only reason he's available was due to kind of financial issues that his previous club were in. So I think he's an absolute bargain being able to get. Again, like I say, at 21, came through PSG's academy. Actually made some first-team appearances before he went and loaned to Sunderland. Sunderland decided not to take him up permanently. And then he went to Turkey. Again, had a decent season there. Had a good season. You can see it's a very good season. Look at it, those numbers, actually. And then he started two games this season and then due to the failure to pay his wages, terminated his contract with the club. So he's currently a free agent. He wouldn't be available otherwise. I think he would actually cost a fair bit if you were looking to buy him. Like transfer market, I think valued at 2.2 million. So if he hadn't had his contract terminated and you were looking to buy him in January, he'd at least be paying a few million there. So I think he really could be a bargain on a free. Not kind of sure what the wage situation was there. I'd imagine he'd be on a decent bit at PSG and then going to Turkey. Not playing for one of the big sides, so I'm really not sure where the wage bracket sits there. But again, like I say, he's still only 21, plenty of room to develop, and I think there's potential profit to be made in a player, not just of his ability, but of the profile he has bringing in. The next player we're going to look at is even younger, so Riley Dagugil, 19, Dutch, 5 at 10, previously played for Ajax, transfer market and valued at 365k. These stats we're going to look at are from the Eerste Divisie, so the second tier where he was playing for John Ajax last season. 30 appearances, 20 from the start, scored two goals, 83% pass accuracy, 53.6% long ball accuracy, 1.22 chances created per 90, 50% dribble success, fell 1.22 times per 90, 79.2% tackles, 1 in 6.66 recoveries. You can see the graph on the right hand side's kind of really well balanced. Looking at his positions as well, so he played mostly left back, but he does start his career as a central midfielder, can also fill in the centre back as well. You probably wouldn't want him playing there being 5'10", but he's that kind of left-sided Dujon Sterling that you could bring in. Very versatile, quality player. Ajax actually did offer him a contract. I've seen it was Fabrizio Romano that tweeted out saying the reason that he didn't accept the deal was due to internal struggles. I tried to dig a bit deeper on that and couldn't really see anything, but a quality young player that Ajax obviously wanted to keep, wanted to develop. He's only 19. Very good at left back, those are good defensive numbers, good numbers going forward. Like I say, he can also play central midfield as well, he's a good enough passer of the ball. 
good enough at creating chances that he could be a really interesting number eight to have on that left hand side. Again, I was looking at him more as a development player, but not in the case of he goes to the B team, but a development player that can be in around the first team. Fill in at left back, fill in the middle of midfield if you have any injuries or you just need kind of substitution and he's good enough on the ball to play further up the pitch but he doesn't have any experience there so like I say not just brought us in a player for us to develop and sell on for a profit but also as someone that can fill in various areas of the squad again I'm still surprised that he doesn't have a new club yet I think it's a bit of a no-brainer where you can bring in someone that's came through an academy as good as Ajax he's they've also wanted to give him a new deal it's not like they've just released him because he wasn't good enough they wanted to give him a new contract. There was some kind of internal issues here. Again, I did try to dig, but I couldn't find anything. So as a 19-year-old that's very versatile and has a lot of potential, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer and someone a lot of clubs should be looking at. Next player and the last player today is more of an experienced signing. So Mervo Bocadi, he's 28 years old, Congolese, six foot one, a centre-back that was last playing for Standard Liège. Transfer market valued at 2.2 million. Looking at his key stats, so 18 appearances, 15 starts last season, got a goal and an assist. 87.1% pass accuracy, 57% long ball accuracy, 1.52 interceptions per 90, 8.08 recoveries per 90, 68.4 tackles won per 90, 61.4% duels won, 66% aerial duels won. If you're looking at the right hand side and wondering how you can have 66% aerial duels won, and only being 14% on the radar for aerial duels won, it's just because of the number, I think it was just over two and a half aerial duels, one per game, which puts that number down, but you can see the percentage is 66%, so even though he's not involved in a lot of aerial duels, he does win most of the ones that he's involved in. Again, a centre-back that's really comfortable on the ball, he has about 20 caps for Congo as well, got a lot of experience playing in the Belgian Pro League, has played in the Europa League as well, strong, physical, good in tackles, Good in jewels, good in the air. That recovery rate of 8.08 is incredible and kind of shows how well he needs the game. I just think he's an experienced centre back that's not kind of 34, 35. So you're getting a lot of experience in someone that's still in their late 20s, someone that's coming into their prime. He's also, like I say, really good on the ball, really comfortable, good passer of it, comfortable dribbling forward and driving through the kind of midfield and that. The way that John Souter does it, Bacadi's very, very good at that. And that's why I think it's a bit of an no-brainer when potentially look one injury and we're relying on Leon Balogun coming in. We don't really know what the first choice centre half duo is going to be. We don't know if Cassin Weir is going to come in with proper, if it's going to be proper and Souter, or if Balogun's going to be involved in there. But again, like I say, we're an injury or two away from heavily relying on Leon Balogun who Despite his qualities, he's not been able to really keep fit the last season. He keeps picking up wee niggly injuries. So, again, like I say, we're an injury or two away from disaster. That's why I think free agent like this is a no-brainer. West Ham were also supposedly interested. There was reports from sources that he was due to move to a club in Turkey. But nothing's happened with that yet. And there doesn't seem to be any further reports on that. That was about a week ago. But West Ham had been looking at him alongside the likes of Joe Matip. So that's kind of how highly he's thought of in circles of teams that are looking for centre-back cover. So again, I think if it's possible, it's a bit of a no-brainer to bring in Bacardi. I'm making this video today because the manager mentioned being able to look at the free agent market and there's still a few out there. There's a lot of high-profile ones, like I said, ones that I think are way out of their price range. But I think these are three realistic players in positions we need. Maybe not a Google so much in position we need in left-back or centre-mid, but more in that versatility and a player with a lot of potential. Whereas Misha is that player that can come in and dictate the tempo of the game and kind of control it the way we've wanted someone to come in and do it. Also has excellent defensive numbers. Bacardi, again, has excellent defensive numbers, but is also really comfortable on the ball. Good passing and, again, good at driving forward with it and kind of opening up the game and making that space. So I think all three players could add a lot to the side. Not 100% sure on the wage situation of them all, but looking at some of the other names, I think these are some realistic options that I do think could not only improve potentially the first 11, but improve the squad as a whole. So let me know what you think of these three names. Let me know if you think any of the other free agents out there are realistic targets or players you think we would like to target. Like I said, I did make this video because the manager has mentioned going into the free agent market as something he might explore. He hasn't done it yet, but it doesn't mean he's not going to. So I know when these kind of videos come out, people are like, oh, we're well, not going to sign anyone. But the manager has mentioned looking at this market. And I do think there's still some spaces for 
the squad depth. So, again, let me know what you think of these players. If there's any other ones you'd like me to cover below, just leave their names in the comment and I'll have a look and see if I think they're realistic. If you have enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day.